Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. Today I'm harvesting some of the sugar snap peas, Norley. Uh, also like to treat them as a monge too as well and excellent for stir frying. And in this video I want to explore how powerful it can be if we change the way that we encounter failures and obstacles in the garden so we can turn them into fantastic opportunities to make our garden more productive and also more enjoyable. So we're not only enjoying the harvesting like I am today, but also all of the steps and processes we take to get to the harvests. And this is part of a series of ultimate vegetable gardening skills. And if you haven't seen the first video in that, which is about observation and interaction, which is just brilliant, a brilliant skill to have, make sure you check that out. I believe there are three key points that will help with this video. And the first one is to understand that the most important element of any garden is you, the gardener. The second one is that we can't and perhaps shouldn't try and control everything that happens in the garden. And thirdly, the more we fail or come up against obstacles, the more we learn. Something us gardeners are accustomed to is failure. And the first thing that needs to be done is reframe the way that we see failure. And if we approach failures and obstacles with the mindset of turning them into challenges and challenges being opportunities that we can rise to and overcome, then right away we've removed some of that negative thinking and negative energy. And I believe that it's so important to have as much optimism as possible in the garden, which is why a lot of you really like the third tip that I had in my previous video about growing for pleasure and not productivity. Because if you focus on the fun side of growing food or of gardening, then the productivity is naturally going to follow. If you're growing food and your only goal is productivity, then you're only working towards the end result, which is how much food can you possibly grow. And if anything slightly hinders your crop yields, then it'll be a source of negativity and frustration. A lot of this video I'll be talking about failures, but the exact same mindset can be applied when it comes to encountering obstacles in your garden. And one common obstacle could be having limited space in which to grow food. So your challenge is to see what kind of opportunities that can come out of having a limited space and enjoying the satisfaction and creativity of finding a solution. And Blake Kirby from Daddy Kirby's Farm will be showing us later on in this video how he overcame an obstacle and turned it into a challenge and the results are amazing. So stay tuned for that. I understand that it's easy to be negative if a failure happens in the garden and this happened with me earlier this growing season. Around 80% of the carrot and of the swede crop was destroyed uh, by voles tunnelling and burrowing underneath uh, the seedlings which were just small and it was very disheartening and frustrating and it's okay to be frustrated if things don't go to plan but I had to remind myself that this was just part of gardening and instead of seeing it as a failure to remember to look at it as a challenge instead. The thing that's dangerous about negativity is that it can very easily suck us in and it's quite funny looking back on the blip that I experienced earlier this season and I can remember thinking that I'm just going to give up growing swede and carrots this year. So it's really important to try and lift ourselves out of that and the best thing to do is just give it a little bit of breathing space and then come back to it. If we can quickly rebound away from the negativity that's associated with a failure and instead see it as a challenge and as an opportunity, then it's a whole different story. 
because the satisfaction that comes from overcoming a challenge is often far greater than the satisfaction of just seeing something go into plan. And it's all about asking ourselves the question of what opportunity or opportunities can come from overcoming that challenge. For me, the answer is usually to try something new and I really enjoy this. I've noticed in the past that it's very easy to settle with what I currently know and stick with it. And sticking with familiarity kind of creates this comfort zone, a bit of a cushion. But if you find yourself inside your comfort zone for too long, you're never going to see any changes in the garden in terms of getting more out of it, in terms of pleasure and productivity. So this year I decided to start with a blank canvas. I've always used planting plans and recently they transitioned into a monthly planting plan so I could really make the most of succession. This year I decided to do something totally different and explore intuitive gardening which I've been sharing quite a bit on on my Patreon page and the whole idea with intuitive gardening is to not make any plan at all so I haven't for this year nothing is down on paper and it's very fascinating the process and I'll be sharing a bit more about how it's going and the results as the year progresses. Intuitive gardening is just an example of a challenge that I set myself in terms of trying to get more enjoyment out of the garden and to see if it's worth having the freedom of choice versus following a planting plan and it's also a perfect example of getting myself out of my comfort zone but also using experience and knowledge from previous years as well as doing research this year to help me navigate through this growing season. The habit of transforming gardening obstacles and failures into opportunities takes time and gardening is a constant learning journey and if you're learning a new skill for the garden it's important to not set yourself expectations that are too high. Some scientists at the University of London did a study which showed that as you lowered your expectations happiness levels would rise. And in the gardening sense, if we approach challenges with the attitude of opportunity rather than achievement, then we will enjoy the process and learn and see what happens. But if we do get an end result and a harvest, then that is just the icing on the cake. An example here is with the asparagus. The first time I tried growing asparagus was using the trench method and it was an utter shambolic fail. This time, did a bit of research and Liz Zorab mentioned about growing in mounds. So I decided to do that. Then they were getting a bit dry. So I decided to mulch them with wood chip and they're already doing a lot better than the last batch. Uh, but I'm on a learning journey and I need to understand that these also need to be propped up and given some support. Another example of approaching a challenge in terms of curiosity rather than just wanting the end result was with the Swedes and although it was upsetting to lose 80% of six rows to vol damage I decided to change strategy and to firstly try out vol repellents like these which I bury in the soil and I put those in and in the meantime I started new swedes in modules and then I thinned them out to one swede per module and I've transplanted them. They were bigger plants as you can see in the photo. Uh, placed them in and the voles have disappeared. These are looking great and it's now made me think that perhaps I should maybe start more swedes using this method rather than planting them directly. Before the vol damage, I was perhaps in my comfort zone when it came to sowing and growing Swedes directly. But the challenge of overcoming that by trying a new strategy and growing them in modules has led me to realize that I need to thin them less so I don't need to use as many seeds. It's easier to control the seedlings and I can get perfect spacings. And it's almost a happy accident to find that this different method which I hadn't used during my being in my comfort zone has turned out to be more successful than the one that I had settled with. 
We're now going to look at a different example in a different climate over in Texas, where Blake Kirby from the Daddy Kerbs Farm, who firstly I wanna congratulate for passing 150,000 subscribers, is going to show us an example of where he encountered an obstacle, but turned it into a fantastic opportunity. And make sure you go ahead and subscribe to his channel and say hello. I've had two gardening challenges somewhat disastrous with this garden space and both of them have to do with water. Thank you Hugh for giving me a chance to share my gardening challenges with this garden space and how to be open and honest about those failures and how I fixed them. In the early stages of this space, this gardening space, one of the challenges that we had was water flooding. The water would rush through here and just rip out all of the nutrients and mulch and compost that I had put in. The way that I fixed that was building raised beds to keep the water out and I used a recycled roofing material to make it economical and beautiful. The second challenge we had with water in this space was actually having enough water for the plants. At the end of the orchard down here I do have a spigot. It's about a hundred feet away and you can see this black line. That is an irrigation line that goes into the garden space. You can't see it so well because the, the plants are growing beautifully, but back here, that line comes in on the back of the raised bed and runs across here. In the garden itself, I ran some smaller quarter inch tubing off of that main line. And in the tubing, built into the tubing, are drip points that drip a half gallon per hour. In total, there are six quarter inch tubings coming off of that main line and they run the full length 20 feet from back to front in this garden space. So there you have it, a garden space that really was doomed to fail because of too much water and also a lack of water. I was able to build raised beds to control the flooding and provide a drip irrigation into those raised beds to supply the water to the plants as they grow. Thanks again Hugh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for sharing that, Blake. And I love how tricky that obstacle was to begin with, but you set yourself a challenge to find a solution, which you did, and your ultimate satisfaction is coming in the form of tomatoes. So my challenge to you is next time you encounter a gardening obstacle or failure, try and see it as an opportunity instead and you may not have enough time to try it again this year but at least you have all of autumn and winter to plan for what you can do next year and all you need to do is ask those questions research and test until you find something that works for you and that's one of the ultimate joys and skills for us gardeners. What I love about gardening obstacles and failures is that they're hidden opportunities for us to find new ways to do things and exciting ways and perhaps increase our garden's productivity. And I just want to finish off by saying that there's no right or wrong when it comes to gardening as long as you're having fun and asking questions and then you'll find that naturally your motivation and productivity within the garden will increase over time and if you want more content and information then check out my patreon where i upload two extra videos every week showing you more details about how i do things in the garden and a lot more behind the scenes so thank you very much for watching don't forget to check out Blake's awesome and inspiring channel and if you have any further questions then please don't hesitate to ask them down below in the comment section goodbye